and we are on YouTube live. Um, it's good to have this actually work. Oh, yeah, it is working. Yeah, if you prefer to listen to us, uh, join us on YouTube, just go to the feminine, go to YouTube and search the feminine woman. That's my channel. Okay. Um, and just comment below if, uh, if you can hear us, if everything's clear. It's not always easy getting everything set up to make sure that this runs smoothly. So fingers crossed. Um, go smoothly. I hope you guys well, are well wherever you are. Um, we've gotten quite a lot of questions already when we announced this live Q&A. I'm just putting out an announcement. You can keep okay. talking. <laughs> so the um, so the title of this is the five deeper truths that we have learned after being together for basically 15 years. Um, we put up a photo of us 15 years ago on the beach um, a few days ago. You may have seen it. Um, so yeah, a lot of people have commented and uh, and asked questions as well for this for the purpose of this live Q&A. So we should address some of those. And if you have any questions along the way, please leave them below and uh, we'll do our best to check them all. Um, I know for a lot of our um, previous Q&As, we, <laughs> we've gone, you know, we, we gone took for about, a very long time, yeah, <laughs> like an hour and a half. Or two hours um, just addressing all these questions. So list them down below and uh, I can't wait to answer them all. Um, so what we've done is I've asked Renee to put down five in the last 15 years. And I thought it would be a fun exercise to see how many of these things um, coincide or are, are similar. Yeah. Um, I have a feeling that some of them may be, but we'll see. We'll see. I don't know exactly what she's written and she doesn't know exactly what I've written. So I think we should start with that. Um, what do you think? Yeah, that's fine. I just want to say I'm not sure I, I agree that they're going to be similar. I reckon they're okay. quite different. They might be very, very <laughs> but different. But we'll see, yeah. Being together for so many years, you start to think alike and you start to have very much the same ideas, even though the expressions are very different. Um, but, yeah. We'll uh, see. We will see. Guys, can you just comment? To, uh, to let me know if you can, if there were any trouble with this particular live video because it is saying poor connection sporadically. Please uh, just want to make sure that everything is working. Uh, let me see, because this is on the phone. Just, if you comment that you can hear us. Uh, comment, just say hi. Yes, I can hear you. That would be good. Normally those comments come pretty quickly, so it's making me think something. Yeah, but wrong. We've, ne we've never used the phone. Oh, right. We've always used, used yeah. the computer, and the computer is... Streaming to good old YouTube. Um, so, yeah. That's right. Comment. The people on YouTube will be watching anyway, so should we continue? Yeah, I just want to make sure that people can hear us. Yeah. That is all. Here we go. Here oh, we yeah. Go. Someone said. Can hear you. Oh, awesome. Good. Thank goodness. <laughs> We'd hate to do the whole live thing and then. <laughs> no one can hear us. There's no sound. <laughs> <laughs> okay. So. Okay. You want to go first or? No, you go first. Go first. Okay. You're a guy, so I'm sure that um, women would love to hear the five things you've learned. Okay. So here are the five things that I've learned. I wrote them down. Um, okay. So the five deeper truths. And, and it's there's so much that we've learned in the last, you know, not just 15 years, but the last year, the last six months, the last month. Um, it was very – it wasn't easy distilling everything down to just some of the deepest, deepest truths and, and deepest um, understanding. But – I felt like um, I felt like I got the five, um, and here they are. Number one, taking responsibility in a relationship gives you godlike powers. <laughs> <laughs> um, you know, I think everyone's heard the saying, "With great power comes great responsibility." But the opposite is also true. With great responsibility, also uh, that gives you great power. Mm. Um, and, and by power, I mean influence. I mean a sense of control. A sense of um, being able to um, add value in ways that make you more influential, if that makes sense. So, uh, it, so anytime you can take more responsibility, I suggest you do so. Um, I think it gives you that sense of not just um, 
the not just the ability to influence others, but also a sense of self-esteem and self. Um, uh, uh, what's the word I'm looking? For? Self-esteem and self um, uh, worth that uh, kind of only comes with. Um, getting outside of yourself. And when I say responsibility, so you start with being responsible for your own um, uh, actions, feelings, and, uh, and and your reactions. And you can extend to being responsible to uh, for the people around you um, when you get good at being responsible for yourself. Hope that makes sense. No, it does. And I guess taking responsibility means you're naturally more invested in that person. And so they're forced to either reciprocate eventually or not. And yeah. so it leads the tone for a deeper relationship it, and a deeper commitment. It, exactly. So um, a, a good analogy there would be, so let's say we, we go to a, we go on a, um, a lunch date with someone else mm. and we offer to pay. We're taking responsibility for that lunch date. And if, and that gives you the opportunity to notice if someone else doesn't reciprocate very quickly and if they don't reciprocate um then the you have the power you have that control um it's in your hands yep. as to what to do next you're not in limbo you're not guessing you're not um you're not uh, just wasting time yeah wasting time and second guessing yourself yeah, so yeah, exactly so i think taking responsibility is a huge part of just uh just adding value to the people around you and, and, and having that sense of um, control in your life. Just checking on YouTube. Yep. Yeah. Okay. Next, next, number two, men and women have very different reproductive agendas and that's okay. I think we need to embrace that. Um, hi Lara. Sorry to interrupt. Just hi Lara. To say. <laughs> so this is one that um, it's one that, is kind of intuitive, but isn't always so um, you, you obvious, I guess. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Um, I think growing up, um, especially growing up, you know, as, as a child, you, especially in this day and age, um, we're taught that we're all kind of the same um, and, and it's the society that conditions us in, in whichever way. Um, I, but, but however, <laughs> it, there is, you know, if you've gone through, um, like understanding men, we talk about all the differences between men and women, um, and and it's it's so um, such a there's, there's such big differences between men's biology and women's biology that it would be an absolute uh, tragedy to ignore these differences and these different agendas. And that's you know it's okay to have different reproductive agendas. I think um, ultimately that is what serves us as a species. It serves us, it, it serves the next generation. Um, that's the whole reason why, you know, men produce 300 million sperm per day, whereas women, um, they have one fertile egg per month. I mean, that is a, a massive discrepancy in itself. So it's really important to embrace that and know that these two different um reproductive agendas there is an overlap there is an area in which they align and it's very important to um know what that is and to to move towards that overlap it's it's like the overlap of a venn diagram and um so i feel like that is um that is what we need to move towards um rather than um just focus on the differences because if you focus on the differences, you know, you're going to, you're, you're going to start hating men and men are hating women and uh, you, you're never going to get very far doing that. So embrace the different reproductive agendas. Nice. Yep. Number three, um, you really have to value in order for a relationship to work long-term uh, you really have to value uh, connection over your own sense of self-importance, significance, or yeah. a sense of certainty. So at the, end, yeah, at the end of the day, um, life is going to throw you so many challenges and so many just curveballs. Um, and you have to value, ha have that sense of uh, connection that brings you together rather than if you focused on your own sense of importance, significance, or certainty, which is often case going to 
um, damage the connection. Uh, yeah, and, and <clears throat> cause disconnects between two people. Yeah. So when challenges occur, if you valued the um, the the connection, then you come together. If you valued certainty or significance in those moments, in those um, make or break moments, let's call them that, then you'll never people, have a relationship last. You'll drift apart. <laughs> yeah. Okay. And eventually, if that happens again and again enough times, then um, it's called a breakup. Yeah. So that's number three. Number four, um, the relationship matters more than anything else. You have to make the relationship matter more than anything else. Um, so I think this is one of those things where it's, I guess, um, overall, when you look at a relationship um, uh, from from a um, top-down perspective, you you have to value that more than almost anything else, especially in critical moments. Um, overall, so moment to moment, yeah. Sometimes you have to go to work; you got to focus on that. But overall, and as an overarching um, sense of importance, I think you've got to focus on what is good for that relationship rather than, um, you know, rather than having work that's important, that's too important. And if that goes on for long enough, the other person is not going to feel appreciated and, and, and it just creates a necessary disconnect. And it, again, it's, it's an overall sense of, you know, this, this, this matters to me and I, and I want to connect um, rather than, um, you know, just, just, disappearing and and being avoidant and going elsewhere if that makes sense of course it makes sense yeah the last two have been very similar to yeah. Mine, yeah number five last one number five you have to care more about the person uh, the other person um so this kind of kind of uh, it, it's similar to taking responsibility and and it's similar to to value connection but you really have to care about the other person um and Often when we say that, when we talk about that, it's, uh, <laughs> we, we get this, um, this concern from the community that, oh, you know, what if I keep caring about someone else and they take advantage of me, they, they keep abusing me, that, you know, we get stuck in that kind of abusive cycle. And I completely understand that. So the, the idea here is not just to care about the other person. The, the idea here is to care about their intent, care about their needs, care about what they're looking for and what they're after. And if you can really care enough to see through their words, to see through their intent, then you, you, you wouldn't get to a place where you, um, you, you get fooled, if that makes sense. You wouldn't get to a place where you go, oh my God, uh, I didn't see that coming because you care enough and you can see through everything that they say, do, or, or feel. Yeah. And, and if you can care that much, then you automatically become more calibrated to where they are at. And uh, calibration is one of the things that we talk a lot okay. because it, it matters so much. Um, you're not going to have a deeper connection if you don't stay calibrated, obviously. Um, so yeah, care about their intent. Care about their intent. Um, and feel through their intent. Hope that makes sense. How do you do that? How do you do that? Yeah. Um, <laughs> number one, think, think, think to yourself, it's not about me. This is not about me. Mm. I am just another being, another one of 7 billion people on this earth, one of trillions of you know, life forms on this planet. And it's, it's not about me. What's happening um, to me is not unique. Yeah, it's not it unique. It might feel very important and unique. It's a part of the whole human experience. Yeah. And, uh, and, and you know, it'll come, it'll pass. You know, <laughs> um, our ancestors would look at us and go, <laughs> <laughs> what is she worried about? What is he worried about? Um, yeah. so, so it's not about you. And if you can do that and if you can get, get out of yourself – then you're able to really absorb and feel where other people are um, and, and just, just allow yourself to do that feel. I think that's, that's a great starting point. Okay. And, and then you get into, and then you sort of get into a, um, a routine or a, a habit of doing that over time yep. and becomes easy. Yep. Okay.
So they are my five answers, five deeper truths. Um, yeah. Do you want to ask if they have questions before we move on to mine? Or okay. Do you want to Does anyone have any questions? Comment below, please. Let me see if there are. Leave a comment now. I hope the live video isn't breaking up. Yeah, no, it looks like it is. On, no. Um, every now and then. Not on the computer, though. Mm. So if you guys have any questions about those five things, David's five things, just comment below. We'll try and answer them. If not, I will move on to mine and get that finished. Okay. Just talk into the mic in, in, on the phone because oh. it might be a bit quiet because this works on the YouTube. Okay. Yeah. A bit uh, louder. Just a tad, a louder on just here. A tad louder. Here. Okay. All right. So I'm moving on to my five things. The first thing is a good man will not tolerate your BS. <laughs> he will expose you to your core and he will expect nothing. <laughs> I'm just looking at your face. <laughs> <laughs> and he will expect nothing less than your deepest truth and vulnerability. Um, I think this is very important for women to know and to distinguish because as women, we already are naturally very vulnerable. We have emotions about every little thing and we're always vulnerable to social cues, to the feelings of other women. Um, and we're always trying to read emotion and respond to emotion. Um, and... Because of that natural vulnerability, we don't always like going deeper because it takes a lot of energy to feel deeper and because it can often feel like they're trying to hurt you. If someone wants you to be more vulnerable, it feels like they're deliberately trying to damage you. Yeah. Um, and we're short, like It's long, but it's not long enough with you. But um, <laughs> that's something I've learned is that he... A good man will demand more from you. He won't tolerate your surface bullshit. He won't tolerate your justifications. He will um, press until he gets to your deeper truth and exposes your real feelings. Because for a good man who's smart, he will know that the only thing he can really trust is a woman who's actually feeling. And a lot of women either don't get that from a man or they, they're just not comfortable going there, they refuse to go there. And so relationships get stuck in this cycle of the man doesn't fully trust her and she's angry that he wants something more from her because, you know, why should I have to do that? Why should I have to give that to you? I don't even trust you. Or I don't trust you so much, enough yet kind of thing. Um, yeah, I hope I've explained that. Yeah, I, I think a part of that is becoming vulnerable and... And for a man to, if, if he truly cared, he would take care of that vulnerability. Mm, um, yes. He would take responsibility for that vulnerability. And, and going back to what I mentioned, responsibility, you, you start to become more responsible for other people's feelings. Not to say that, you know, it, it's your fault if they feel bad. Not at all. You just, you, you take you take it upon yourself to be there for them. Yeah. And, and to, to give them more resources to feel certain if they're uncertain. Yeah. To make them feel worthy if they don't feel worthy. Because even if they're the wrong person for you, the wrong friend even, or the wrong partner, you get to walk away feeling like you put yourself on the line, you did the right thing. You're not crippled with guilt for the next 10 years. Yeah. You know? And with any any kind of relationship, it's always so much better. You're going to feel so much better if you go into it adding value, adding that care, even if it never worked out, even if yeah. you don't see them ever again after a week, a day. You're a bigger person for you, it. Yeah, exactly. Yeah. You take the high road and you become more. And ultimately, that's what matters. You become more. So you become more resourceful in the future in the same scenario. And, and on that note as well, I, was, I wanted to mention something. Um, when, I, when I said you, you need to care about the other person, a lot of the times we get this, uh, uh, this, this comment that, oh, why should we work on the relationship? Why should I work on the relationship? Why should I as a woman or a man? doesn't matter. Why should I? I mean, at the end of the day, it's not work. If you cared enough, it's not work. If you cared enough, uh, you know. And everyone else is saying that, too, by the way. <laughs> all the men, all the women are saying that anyway. But like, maybe not all, not the like good ones. But some people, everyone's saying that. Mm, so what's the point? It's redundant. It's. Some people would su suggest, um, oh, a, a long-term relationship is work. Um, uh, I don't see it that way at all. Um, if you cared enough, it's 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 not work. It's it's fun. It's 
it, it, it's your life. It has meaning. Like at, at first it's going to feel like work because you feel like, oh, crap, I actually have to give to this person. I actually have to care. Well, taking God. responsibility. Yeah. But, but that's work. That, that's what you have to do anyway. To yeah, do but it. as you do it more, your whole perception changes and you get used to it and you build that confidence and that self-worth within yourself and that esteem and it just becomes a part of you. Um, yeah, I mean, yeah. raising kids. I was going to say it, that. It's, it's work. But but you love it, it, it and you wouldn't. I, I wouldn't want to do anything else. Yeah. Um, building a business, it's work. But for most people doing that and they're passionate about it, it's not. It doesn't feel like work. They they, they spend sixteen hours a day working, but it, it's fun. It's it's play. It's it's adventure. Yeah. Um, so, just a different um, spin on that on, on the meaning and, and everything changes. Yeah. Anyhow. Okay, so we dwelled on that for a little bit, that first point. I just want to say it's so hi, sunny, Kathy. Yes, it is. It is very sunny. No bushfires right now. Thank goodness. No, no smoke. And no flooding here, which is good because <laughs> it's flooding everywhere else in New South Wales and Queensland. Um, lucky we are relatively safe. I'll just quickly go um, to number two. Yeah, let, let's do these five before we answer All right, I'll, I'll be quick, guys. Number two, uh, I've written, you can have conflict and still build trust. In fact, I go further in saying that conflict is, is there to help you build the trust. Um, facing conflict with love and openness is more important than my own need for significance and certainty. So the whole, that's, it's similar to one of yours. Mm -hmm. um, so the whole idea behind this is for you and I and everyone, ideally, <laughs> to become at one with conflict and make it so that there's no separation between you and the man. Um, of course, separation is necessary, especially when you don't have that full trust yet. But when it comes to conflict, a lot of people are not quite very balanced. They either completely avoid and they, they, can't, they can't survive any form of conflict or they go right in and just fight. <laughs> and... Neither of them are particularly most calibrated calibrated or... ways to approach. Obviously, you know, some people fight like cat and dog, but then they have a great sex life, that kind of thing. But that's not that's not really going deeper. That's just like a pattern of this is just a cycle. It just keeps cycling through. The whole purpose of having conflict is so that you can go deeper with each other. And for you as a woman, it's very important for you to appreciate that if you can show your man or the man you're interested in, that you're still there, your heart's still there and your your loyalty is still there in the moment of conflict. If you're looking him in the eyes and you're still there for him and there for the relationship in that moment, then no amount of conflict is actually going to be able to break the connection that you have. So that's one very important thing that I've learned. Um, yeah. Because I mean, think about this. Can you build trust without conflict? No, no, because the conflict is what's designed for you to show your true colors. Mm. It's there to show you how they're there for you to prove exactly how much you, you do are, care. Who exactly. you are who in those you moments. really are beneath your facade or the nice dress exactly. or the nice shoes. Exactly. And if it's not tested, if love wasn't tested, how would you know it's, if it's real? Exactly. You wouldn't. Exactly. Um, and, and you would always either be under a sense of false um, confidence, pretense. That's right. Or you would just never be sure. Yeah. So it has to be tested and that's what, you know, you, you cannot avoid conflict. Uh, just if you want a, a, um, a head start on other women, do this. Trust the process. Just acknowledge and appreciate that conflict does serve a good purpose. And uh, I can always guarantee you that any man will see that there's something different about you um, because there's not many women who can truly be open through conflict. So that's that. Okay. Embrace it. Yeah. Number three, uh, almost everything you do or say from fear in a relationship will damage the relationship. So I've written, be conscious of where your words and actions are coming from. If you have fear, say you're scared because that is better than just acting out. <laughs> I think that's, that's a very relevant point to... Uh, for, for a lot of people who have a sense of just general insecurity and, and, and yep. a sense of unworthiness in this day and age, it's so easy to just 
let fear dictate every action. Yeah, and you, you should be conscious of when you're fearful. You know, sometimes if you want to snap back at someone or pull away or run away or judge them or, you know, just... It's blame, okay to say I'm scared. Them. Blame them, yeah. <laughs> I'm scared. It's okay to say you're scared. It's a simple, sorry, I'm scared right now. Um, I'm scared. The, there is, you know, yeah, exactly. It, the, the, there's no need to, to hide it. Um, in this day and age, you know, Things move so quickly and, and we have to adapt and evolve so quickly with everything that I think at some point everyone is going to be scared about yeah, something. Of course, of course. And there's nothing wrong with that. Um, just be with yourself. Just just acknowledge it. Just embrace your own fear. Interesting. Karina says, yeah, Kathy says be brave. Exactly. And Karina says awesome. Yes, expressing vulnerability, looking eye to eye, heart to heart. Exactly, exactly that. The um the the eye to eye connection is not just for him and the relationship. It's for you. It's for you to face who you really are, to let all the difficult things and the difficult truths about yourself come up, so that you can feel more and cleanse yourself more, and understand yourself better. And that's a lot better than just running away or just um just having this cat and dog fight. Okay, number four. four. Having a man be in love with you is the most important thing. It is more important than the money he makes, the way he dresses, and how good looking he is. Uh, okay, so I want to just put this into context because I know that, you know, I've done surveys of women in our group and whatever on our list many times before. And um, you can see it in uh, scientific and evolutionary, um, evolutionary psychology studies that women value a man who can make money. They do. That's that's no secret. However, we're going to look at this from different contexts and perspectives as well. So on the one hand, it's very important to look for a man who already has resources, but is a man who has resources more important than a man who is actually invested in you and is actually in love with you? Because if you get together with a really rich man and he provides for you and you have kids with him, Seems all right, yeah. I mean, you get money. The kids have more opportunities. But is that more important than having children and having a relationship that's strong and started on the right footing? Because money can come and go. And yeah. what's more important for the next generation, for your children, and even for the longevity of your intimate relationship if you don't want children, is the quality of the connection and the quality of the relationship. A man who is in love with you and you're in love with him is worth so much more for raising your children than is his money. Also because a man who is in love with you will try and make it work regardless. But a man with money who isn't in love with you. Money is yeah. only one resource, whereas if he really cared, he, he becomes resourceful. And um, exactly. ultimately... Uh, money doesn't raise kids, it's care, it's love, it's, it's attention. Those are the things that raise kids. And, and if you look at the long game, if you look at what really matters, the next generation, the next generation, generation after that, when you're gone, look, what do you think is really more valuable? Sorry to interrupt. No, 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 no. More valuable for two or three generations from yourself now. Ex yeah. Exactly. Money comes and goes. You know, people go broke all the time. Yeah. People who've had <coughs> all the money in the world, billionaires, um, go broke and then they kill themselves mm. um, so money is just one form of resource your emotions your your sense of care you know that's infinitely more valuable mm. in most circumstances yeah um, you know we, we know friends family friends of ours who have all the money in the world and and yet their kids want to kill themselves <laughs> Yeah, that's yeah. So that's heartbreaking. That is heartbreaking. That's the truth. That that is heartbreaking. They you know? literally have all the money in the world, as you said, and the daughter wants to kill herself. Yeah, that's and there's no relationship between the mother and the daughter. And you would think that that's just because of the mother and the daughter relationship, but no, it's an extension of the quality of the relationship between the mother and the father, which passes on to the kids. Yeah, is the screen a bit dark? Yeah, it's a bit dark. Yeah, so Kathy says emotionally available man. Exactly. Oops. Oh. 
it's just maybe it's maybe. super easy. <laughs> Hope you guys can still see us. It looks a bit dark. Let it does look dark, which is odd, isn't it? It is a bit odd. But does that mean it's dark for them though? Possible. Okay. Guys, does the screen do we look dark? Can you just let it, let us know if we look quite dark or do we look can you see us? Uh, <laughs> what are you doing? I'm not sure what I'm doing. <laughs> okay, that looks a bit not more normal. Oh, okay, we don't look dark. That's good. Okay. okay. Um so it's it's kind of like um the, the money thing, it's kind of like money is an obvious uh, sign of resources. Yeah. And you it's, can it's count true. money. It's it's yeah. there. Yeah. And it's also for women who um, are thinking short term, they will look for money. Yeah. They will it, look for them. Um, exactly. So as a woman, it's important to not just think long term, uh, not just think about short term mating, but think about long term mating. Don't just think about your own immediate comfort. Think about the the future of your children, the future of your relationship and the future of your children's children. Okay, so I had one final one and one of them is a complete uh, copy, copy <laughs> obviously unintended, of David's. So I'm just going to choose the bonus one. For now. Oh, no, you can, you can say it because, you know, we wanted to see how many of these we had. Okay, kind of all right. Number five was always create togetherness, not separation. Um, women can be critical, judgmental and cold. Of course, men can too. Um, yeah, so that's basically like what you said. So I'm just going to say you said focus on the connection. So I'll put it simply just say, yeah, that, that's what I mean. Focus on the creation. Create the togetherness. Don't actively create separation. Don't just act impulsively, just impulsively, manipulatively, judgmentally, um, um, punishingly. I don't even know if these are real words. Uh, but they are now, <laughs> they are now, um, any kind of punishing, pulling away, threatening love, all those kinds of things. Obviously we're human and we make mistakes, but we want to strive for more togetherness, more focus on the connection, more presence, more of your emotional presence than separation. And I guess that's a lot, um, it's very easy to create separation if that's all you know, especially if you had some sort of insecure attachment, whether it's ambivalent, um, avoidant, or uh, what's the other one I'm thinking of? Avoidant, uh, anxious. Anxious, avoidant, disorganized. Anxious, avoidant. Exactly. Um, it, it is a whole topic of itself. We've sort of done videos on it in the past. Silent treatment. Um, exactly. Um, I think we're we're gonna we've got a, a guide that we want to publish about secure attachment sometime in the future. Yep. I won't give away too much, but oh. again, it's it's a big topic that I I um if you feel like your center of gravity is, is not in togetherness but in separation, yeah. then I would suggest you learn more about attachment styles and, and look at um what what um conditioned you or what 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 gave you that kind of sense of separation is home that that idea or that that feeling if that yeah makes and sense. try to have a look at yourself objectively try to observe the way you interact with a man and see oh do i come across as warm do i is, is it appropriate like is it nice is it kind and warm how i'm treating him does it foster connection or is it more um separate yeah um yeah, so it's important to look into your own childhood because I know personally I was raised in a family where separation was the norm. I mean, I, I can't remember really hugging my parents very much and I've had to unlearn that uh, for David's sake and also for the sake of my children. And I'm very proud of what I've achieved because that was hands down the hardest thing I've ever had to do, harder than giving birth, harder than... Um, rocking the crap out of my son to sleep for an hour and a half, <laughs> um, harder than the hardest things I've ever done. Uh, but it's worth it. It's worth it. Yeah. yeah. I, I think us as humans and as babies, we naturally go to towards togetherness. And 
that takes a lot of resources from the mother or the, the father or whoever the caregiver is. And sometimes they reject that and we learn separation. We feel like that is, you know, that, that is the norm. We don't trust togetherness. Yeah. Um, and if you're in that boat, um, Which is please, a lot of us. I think. Yeah, I, I think it us. is a lot of us. Yeah. Please, you know, go, go just research into attachment styles. Um, we'll talk about, about that more in the future, but, um, and how you can, uh, drag yourself out of that. Yeah. Um, but, but yeah, attachment styles is, is a huge part of how we do relationships. Yep. Okay. Do you want to do the bonus one? I, I wanted to, but I feel like we should really be answering their questions. I think we should. Uh, you can do it quickly. Okay. Okay. Bonus, bonus point I had was you may have to sacrifice old male and female friends in order to invest in your relationship. And this is controversial. But I'm going to say your relationship is more important than friends. I said it. You did. <laughs> um, it's kind it, of similar to the last to one of yours that you said the relationship matters more than anything else. Yeah, it has to matter. Um, absolutely. And I know this is hard because we've all been burned by a friend who left us for their new boyfriend. But I don't kind of mean it like that. You can still keep your friends. You can still um, love your friends. But what you've got to know is that the level of investment that a truly intimate and committed relation, intimate relationship requires from you is much more than you could ever imagine. If you want your relationship to work, you have to sacrifice more of yourself, more of your selfishness, more of your own certainty and needs than you could have ever imagined. Um, and that's not a bad thing. And one thing I learned is that in order to maintain and create this incredible relationship that I have with David and now who we have two beautiful boys who are so incredibly securely attached and so loving themselves, we wouldn't have been able to give that to our children if we, if we hadn't both sacrificed friends and even family. Now, the last thing I wanted to do was sacrifice family, but it wasn't really a family in the first place. So <laughs> You have to do the best for... If you've got a toxic family and you don't want to have a toxic relationship, and of course you're going to have to cut people, toxic mm. family, family members off because you will feed off their toxicity. Yeah, absolutely. So. Absolutely. Absolutely. I think it's a good time to look at some of the questions. Yes, let's look at some of the questions. So, because Thanks for listening, guys. I know. They've been I know. We went on a rant, 40 minutes of just us talking about – I mean, there, there were quite a few things we had in common. Yeah. Um, and That's uh, good to know. <laughs> at the end of the day, these are the deeper truths. And I guess not a lot of people talk about them because. No. Well, not um, a lot of people get there. You have no, to, they you don't have get to there. kind of earn that. You do have to earn it. And you do very much have to earn it. And um, it's so easy. Okay. It's so easy to get on the camera and say, you got to be feminine. You got to be high value. You got to do this and that. But at the end of the day, <laughs> <laughs> Don't get us started on this one. <laughs> yeah, at the end of the day, um, that is only a small perspective of the whole world, of everything. Oh, no. And um, when Ace talked about this, I've talked about this, feminine, masculine, yeah, it's a small part of it. It's a good framework to understand certain things. Absolutely, yeah. But it's not everything. And, and you, if you just – if you think that being feminine is 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 going to – to take solve you from here to there and, and solve all your problems. Well, I've got news for you. It's not. <laughs> um, and not only that, a lot of people's definitions of feminine is completely twisted, damaging and off. And on that note, just know that if you are a biological woman, chances are like 80, 90% chance you are already deeply feminine in your core. The whole thing to, you know, if you want to become more feminine, just strip those layers away, strip the conditioning away, just be bare with yourself. Yep. Um, you know, the, the easiest way. A good man will expose it in you anyway. Exactly. <laughs> a good way, in my opinion, to, to, to get there, to, to peel those layers off will be to just hop into a cold shower and <laughs> there's nowhere, there, there's nowhere to hide. You're physically in like this sense of fight or flight. And, and that I feel like gets to the core of you quicker than anything else can. Um, no amount of talking, um, 
or even trying to feel is going to get you there as quick as being physically in stress and then your true nature will show up. Well, I think that's important to hear it from your perspective because I disagree. I mean, I think, yes, it's very important, <laughs> but that's your perspective. It is my For perspective. me as a woman, I think the most important thing, even better, is to have someone like you who forces me to feel. <laughs> You'll do it much faster. But it doesn't than always in happen. A cold shower. I, I get it, but it doesn't. It, no, but the opportunity doesn't always happen. It's not always. The, true. You're it right. It doesn't always present That's itself. True. Whereas cold shower, get in right yes. now. Um, and it, it works for me. It's like it. It makes me feel emotions that are often difficult. Well, you to can't feel. control it if you're yeah yeah because because you're yeah. you're you're physically in stress. <laughs> yeah. Um. Okay, so we have a bunch of questions. Um, before we, we continue on the questions, um, just so you know, we are running a sale, a Valentine's Day sale, um, on some of our most popular products. We are giving 40% off with the coupon code VDAY2020. The link is, I should probably get the link. Um, if, you, if you're on our email list, is you probably have Is it on the Feminine Woman page? Uh, it probably, oh no, it, Maybe. It would be. It doesn't it? matter. Go find the link. Um, forty percent off, oh. and it ends on the nineteenth of February, which is in I think three days' time. So go check that out if you have an eye in some of our programs. This is a good time to take advantage of that. Um, I just realized I put the. Don't worry, <laughs> I made a boo boo on something important. Oh. Um. Okay. Don't worry. Okay. <laughs> Don't worry about the link. Okay. Just, so, it's in your email. If you need the link, just comment below and we'll add okay, the Okay, let's go to the questions. Later on. First let's go question. to the questions. Yes, exactly. Let's go to the questions. Uh, why? What got me attracted to Renee? And at what point did I know she was the one for you? Oh, very personal. What point did you know she was the one for you? <laughs> I'm excited about this one. Are you? Yes. Are you really? Okay. Um, so what got me attracted to Renee? Um, she was always very playful. Um, so we met when we were 18, 19 ish. Yeah. She was always very playful. Um, and, uh, yeah. <laughs> <That's> it <laughs> <laughs> it sounds like you're going to go for something deep. I'm like, she was no, always the, very playful. That, um, that is a deep, that, that, that's a very deep thing. It, Playfulness is something that I talk about so, so much in my articles, my programs. It's, it's a huge part of um, the creating attraction, um, especially earlier on. And even now, you know, we're very playful with each other. And that, you know, I think you need to have that kind of dynamic in, in the relationship. Um, uh, but, yeah, I think her playfulness was, was the first thing um, – that opened the doors, I, I guess. Um, yeah, and not not afraid to engage, not afraid to just speak your mind, just just engage with the other person, just to really um, just just play with them. Well, I liked you. I, I know, I get that. <laughs> yeah. No, it's all right. I'm, I get it. I think a, I think a lot of women are, are, are afraid. If, if they're into a man, they're, they're afraid to, like, engage. They're oh, afraid to yeah, – they, they, they lean back. Oh, <laughs> um, there's a time for that, but it's, like, to, to engage isn't a desperate thing. I didn't feel like if, – if, if you do it in a playful way, I don't feel like it's a, it's, it's, a, it's a chase. I don't feel like you're being desperate. I don't feel like you are chasing someone. I feel like it's, it's adding value. Yeah, absolutely. Um, and at what point did I know she was the one for you? So, um, it's not, it's never a conscious thing. It's a subconscious thing. And, and it's, it's one of those things that you don't think about, but you just go to it because it feels right. It feels right or feels good. It's, it's, it's a very unconscious thing. Mm -hmm. You, you have this great connection with a woman, you gravitate towards her, you, you, you go there and, um, well, you sort of hijack your brain. Yeah, they, they basically hijack your brain. Um, I, I'm sure that's kind of what happens to women, right, as well, if they fall in love. I'm not sure. <laughs> but but that, ha that happens to men. Yeah. So it's not that you consciously think that she's the one. 
you just you just automatically go there if if that makes sense yeah. um and through your actions she becomes the one hmm. interesting okay very nice i hope that is a good enough answer i hope that made sense as well because it's not always yeah um well i think i remember asking you many many years ago like something similar in terms of like am i the one for you or like i, I think go. and you never had a straight answer you just i think when you think back like as a man you there are moments where you go oh i never thought of it about it that way is she the one and, and then you think about <laughs> you think about everything that you've been through and like yeah i guess i guess she is i never thought about it that way i never really consciously decided oh she's going to be the one it's not like that. It's it's a feeling. It's a gut feeling. Um, it, it's some and it's something that you look back retrospectively and go, oh yeah, I guess, I guess that that is uh, that is the case. <laughs> Never thought about it that way. Yeah. 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 And on that note, let's uh, put in a shameless plug for your DVD right there because there's one on the oh, table yes, right one here. And only. <laughs> if you haven't picked up Renee's DVD, it's a good time to do so. The title is Becoming His One and Only. The promise here is to teach you the five secrets to have your man fall in love with you, fall deeply in love with you, and beg you to be his one and only. Of course, a gut feeling of one and only, not just something that he promises or, or declares, but something that he yeah. feels, which is infinitely more powerful. Yeah. Can I just go to YouTube in case there's any questions there, or do we want to? You wanna... can. There are no questions on YouTube. Hello, everyone on Hi, YouTube. Hi, Nasra. Hi, Vicky. Okay, let's go to the next question, which okay. is: um, Do you want to do live questions or do this? Uh, let's do live questions. Right, does because, anyone have any yeah, questions? Because you're spending well, the time with us, so let's. Um, oh, hang on. Was well, there one? Let's just look at all the previous comments. Okay. Bear with us. Oh, it's so sunny today. It is incredible. <laughs> <laughs> Very often I'm just working away and I don't notice. Yeah, the man cave day. is a dark, dark place. I personally don't like the man cave. We've been having pelicans in the backyard. Dark. Just... <laughs> Work has to be done. Yeah. Why can't I see all the comments? Um, maybe if we do this. Oh. Oops. Comments, comments, comments. Um, I think someone just men uh, mentioned something about jealousy. Oh, Kathy, how do you deal with jealousy and other women? In fact, I believe you have a blog post on that, a very good one. Uh, she might be talking about other women being around you. Oh, yeah, instead of uh, other women being jealous of other women. Of oh. Yeah. Um, Kathy, can you clarify? If you're still here, Kathy, Kathy Bailey Mayers. Um, yeah, just to clarify exactly what you mean by jealousy and other women, as in being jealous of other women or what it is that you mean. New comments too. Go click on it. Oh. Yes. <laughs> Alrighty, yeah, so dealing around him and other women. Uh, how do I deal with it? Oh, uh, okay. So other women hitting on David or other women being in David's life? Well, let's let's rewind back to when they actually were in your life because nowadays you don't interact with too many women. Unless through your work, obviously. Yeah, unless it's through my work, but otherwise. Back Because we have kids and we're so busy and so involved with our kids. Um, we sort of choose that. Yeah. Sorry, I was thinking of an answer. Okay. Yeah. No, go ahead. Okay. So, uh, how do I deal with? How did I deal with it? Uh, the best way I know how to deal with it is just to acknowledge that it's there, and just to feel that it's there, and know that the reason why I feel that jealousy is because I actually love him deeply, very much, and um, I want him for myself. And I find by acknowledging that, I'm able to be softer. And by being softer, I can then actually be with David and not take away from the relationship, not do anything silly that would damage my relationship. Um, because sometimes when we get jealous, we can, without, if we don't investigate it, we can 
do things that kind of like we, we blame him for doing a certain thing or and it comes out on know, them. we try and control him um yeah when i acknowledge the jealousy and feel it and know that it comes from a love for him and wanting to have him as my own then yeah that's yeah and I think- I, i'm allowed I, i'm able to process the emotions by myself and with him yeah this one of our little boys just run down and then run back up. Hey Zach. You okay, Zach? You're right. We're just working, yeah. Good boy. <laughs> he got himself some water. Okay, so yeah, that's... I think it's important to to acknowledge and 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 play with it even. Like, oh, did you see Jane over there? I think she has a crush on you. You know, just just play with that and um, be on his side. Yeah. Instead of just pointing the finger and go, you know. <laughs> You're making me feel bad. It's yeah, all it's all your fault. <laughs> <laughs> exactly. So choose your Je- side. Jealousy is a protective thing. It's a good it's a, it's thing. It's a good I thing. Mean, um, it makes me realize, oh, crap, like, I mean, I really do love him. Yeah. You know, like, I, I do love him. And that, that sometimes your body doesn't know how to. Yeah. Just, it's, it's there, but you should sit with it. There's a whole book written about jealousy and how it, it um, adds value. It, it, it's there to. Yeah. Um, it's a good thing. Yeah. Um, I, I don't know if it's David Buss. Um, oh, it no. could he, be. He has a book on jealousy. Okay. It's mm, probably not. Okay. What, what do you think it is? Yeah. Yeah. So I think play with it and, uh, yeah, it's, it's always funny. If someone's the hit on me, it's always funny. <laughs> <laughs> well, if, if the reverse happens, you always play with it. I, I love David's way of dealing with jealousy because he never really lets me know he's jealous. He only tells me, if you look carefully, you'll know when I'm jealous. <laughs> the only thing you say. He never gives it away. Um, he always brings it back to the relationship. He always, um, like, for example, the other day there was a guy who was messaging me or some person interacting in- inappropriately with me at I won't say where I go because it will give it away. Um, and anyway, so anyway, a man who inter- interacts with me somewhat inappropriately, he will he will never get angry. It will never be this whole thing that develops into a fight. He'll just have a laugh with it. And me, oh no, you, you used to say something funny that was really you used to say something like oh can't let your wife out of your sight for a second or something. <laughs> Just have to keep her in the basement a bit more. <laughs> yeah, I mean. It, you just play with it. Yeah. yeah. And, and it allows him to acknowledge the feeling. It allows me to know that he cares enough to feel jealous. Oh, uh, hang on. Maybe you don't feel jealous. I don't know. I always have to be guessing. I guess we'll keep you guessing. <laughs> but, yeah, you, you get those feelings out by playing with it um, rather than just pointing the finger at the nearest person. Yeah. Yeah. Don't, don't take it so seriously. It's Everyone has it. Everyone has jealousy. It's a good thing. It's not a bad thing. Yeah. No, come closer. Your head's getting cut off. Oh, okay. Okay. Um, let's go to... So no life questions to answer? No, at the moment, I don't think. Any questions, guys? Um, Kate. Hey, Kate. Tricks and tips for dealing with anxious attachment styles. Types, no, types, yeah. Um, for having more self-love, self-esteem. Um, so I think Kate's referring to herself. Yeah. 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 So if you're an anxious attachment type. Yeah. Um, I feel like in, <sighs> in those moments, it's, it's very, it's difficult to do it by yourself. Um, but I think it's possible. I think it's important to strip away those layers, those outer layers as much in your state and the, the physical state change then makes it so much easier for your emotions to surface. And, and then you can evaluate those emotions. And from that place, you can let go of some of the stuff that no longer serve. You can see where your primary pattern is because they always say, I'm sure you've heard this, that you really find out someone who someone is when they're under stress. Mm. And cold shower, like David was saying, it produces that stress. It's just, and it's easily available to you. It's in your home. So when you get in the cold shower, is your first reaction to get angry? Is your first reaction to 
I don't know what else other to, to avoid to, to avoid to shut it down. Um, it's very telling what your instinctive reaction is to it. And you can actually train yourself to go from anger or avoidance to open arms to, yes, this is a part of life. I'm at one with the cold shower. Yeah. And th there's no one to blame in a cold shower. There's, it is what it is. You just be there with your emotion. It's not like, um, oh, it's because that person did this to, to that person did it to me and, and th therefore I'm feeling the pain. No, you put yourself in the cold shower. You put yourself in that physically altered state, that, that stress, that fight or flight. And from that fight or flight state, if you can get comfortable in that state, then you'll have a lot more resilience and resourcefulness in real life situations where you become more triggered um, by, by your anxiety, et cetera. Yeah. So essentially what we're saying is if you have an anxious attachment, it's also likely that you have, I just want to add in anxious avoidant attachment because it's like a cycle, um, face the situations that bring it up, face the situations that you avoid because um, that's the only way for yourself to condition it. And sadly, even for myself, those were the things I would always try to avoid. For example, um, for many years I had an anxious attachment style. And so for me, stress levels, it wasn't hard to get my stress levels through the roof um, when it came to something like traveling overseas. Um, I just, it's funny, like when I was with my parents, we used to fly across the world and it would, it would never bother me. But it's like when I left them, even though my relationship with them wasn't healthy, I would jump on a plane and I would get anxious and I would go into this fight or flight state. And so I would always avoid travel. Um, things like having parties at home, I would try to avoid that because I just, the stress, I just don't want to, you know, having multitude of different people just coming into my home and what if I can't make all of them happy and what if they secretly hate me or all those weird things that come up when you're an anxious, <laughs> the, the weird thoughts that come up when you're an anxious person. Um, I had to do the exact thing I felt I couldn't do. So he made me travel with an 18-month-old still breastfeeding baby and a four-year-old. He made me mm -hmm. have the parties at home. He forced me to do it. And by doing it, I I changed. You know, I may not be 100% better because, hey, attachment, anxious attachment styles are etched into you from a very young age and they are harder, somewhat hard to change. But I've changed at least 40%. I've improved, you know, bare minimum 40% as a person, I've improved. So do the things that you feel like you can't do and very soon you'll notice that it's not, it's not a thing anymore. It's, you've adjusted. You're no longer that. Yeah, you really have to do the difficult things, I think. Yeah, yeah. Um, but there's a place for it. There's a place for it. But it doesn't, it doesn't put you, you know, it doesn't help you heal. Uh, it's comforting. It, yeah, it's, it's comforting com to do that for yeah. sure. But comfort isn't necessarily what you want to aim for when you want change. Yeah. Yeah. It doesn't change those patterns. Yeah. That's comfort comfort might help you sleep better at night, but it's not going to change your pattern hmm. of anxious attachment. So. Exactly. Um, we have a question from Nancy Stark on YouTube. Hello from San Clement. California. California. Pisces. Pisces. I'm a Pisces too. <laughs> Recently got into a friends with benefits, going to, uh, got into a friends with benefits, question mark, exclamation mark, but haven't heard from him in four days. Nothing on Valentine's Day either. Am I overreacting? Well, I'm not sure exactly what you expect out of the situation. Casual sex, friends with benefits. We have to understand if we get involved with it the woman inherently always invests more. So for me, the answer is in your question. You're saying that, am I overreacting? Well, the fact is that you have feelings about it. You have a reaction about it because you're invested. Your body is invested because you've been intimate with him. And this is why it's so hard for not only me, but any woman <laughs> to truly detach from a friends with benefits or casual sex situation. Um, are you overreacting? No. See it as a sign that perhaps this wasn't the best uh, path for you and uh, sit with the feeling. Because if you don't, you repeat the cycle again and uh, 
Yeah. Just sit with all the feelings. Um, I'm sure there'll be a wide array of feelings, anything from vulnerability, anger, sadness, um, hatred, anything. Just yeah. acknowledge what they are and feel what they are so that you can calibrate better next time. And the feelings are no mistakes. You know, they're, they're no, there for a reason. Exactly. Um, a like, very, very good reason. They're given to, they're a gift. They're given to you. You know, they're there for you. Your feelings are trying to be there for you. So be there for them. Hear them out. Yeah. And, and women always, well, most women. <clears throat> <laughs> I'm not sure what our four-year-old is doing, but uh, what was I saying? Um, yeah, women have this tendency to attach in a friends with benefits kind of situation. You just more. Whereas you men, it's just... as men, you know, you could have sex with a tree and still, you know, it's fine. You, you don't feel a thing. <laughs> You can have sex with the same woman for 10 years and be like, yeah, whatever. Yeah, whatever. It's attached. Exactly. And just let it go like that. So, but so. Woman, she's letting. What's the best way to put this? She's letting the man inside of her. And um, I'm trying to find the right way to explain this. It's not easy. I know intuitively that you're investing more. I mean, it's not. Well, look, you're look. letting a man inside your body where he could impregnate you and look at the consequences. cause you to be fully responsible for something that huge that consequences. eats off you, literally sucks away your nutrients. A baby will suck away your nutrients, suck away your, uh -huh. you know, everything away from you as a mother um, and cause okay, you to yeah, sacrifice yeah. yourself. Whereas a man, okay, the act yeah. of sex, there is simply no consequences. no consequences. So acknowledge it for what it is. Women have to women naturally invest more when they have sex with a man, condom or not. I don't care what it is. Yeah, exactly. Okay, what if he doesn't say hello first? Is it okay for the woman to always uh, to always initiate hello? This is by dim sum. I assume that's a not your real name, but <laughs> regardless. Um, what if he doesn't say hello first? Yeah, why okay? can't you say hello? In fact, can. it's even better than just saying hello is to say something that is a, a better opener, a best, better icebreaker. It would be something more like. Hey, I like your shoes, um, but do they match your personality? <laughs> you know, some something funny, something that's you know when you say hello to someone, and this is this is um, this is something that I think uh, you, you have to understand. Um, when you go up to someone and you say hello, w what's their reaction? Well, okay, why did she just say hello to me? She has an agenda. Does she want to like? <laughs> Like, that was awkward. yeah, exactly. <laughs> um, I remember, I remember back um, a few years ago, I was going to my cousin's wedding in California, and you know, I was, I was the best man. I was helping him, you know, um, coordinate the crowd and, and all that. And at some point in the night, um, everyone was on the dance floor, and, and people were talking away, and everyone was having a great time. And this woman came to me, and, and she started talking to me. I'm, and at first, I'm like, yeah, okay, she's talking. That, that's fine. Um, everyone's having fun. Everyone's talking. No problems. And then it clicked in my head that she came to the wedding alone. She was single. And she was getting to, trying to get to know some people. Mm. And I'm like, oh, my God. I, I, didn't, I didn't realize that at first. Um, uh, and, and then I felt really awkward. Because um, I was trying to be friendly to everyone because I was, you know, I had, I had a responsibility at the wedding. Um, and, and her approach was quite, um, I guess, looking back on it, quite, quite obvious. It wasn't, yeah. it wasn't a, a playful approach. It was more just, hello, what do you do? You know, oh, kind of thing. It, it was kind of a bland kind of yeah, approach. Yeah. And nothing wrong with that. I think most of us do that because we don't know what, what, what else to, to do. do. Yeah. So, this is the whole reason why I created things like, you know, high value high banter, banter and attraction pebbles. It's because so that the playfulness by nature. It, with by, with by her, nature yeah, with her asking my details, asking about me, that made me uneasy because it's yeah. a, <laughs> yeah. And you know, being a male and being a little bit thick, I, I didn't actually realize it at the time because, you know, I, I, I was I was happy speaking to everyone because I wanted to make sure that they were having a good time. Um, yeah, but if, if she just, 
you know, if, if it was done with a, a sense of playfulness, I think, um, you know, I think the conversation would have turned out a lot better and, and, and more, a lot smoother and, and you know, mm. without. It wouldn't have created the awkwardness. Telegraphing her intent. the intent yeah. too much. Yeah. It wouldn't have seemed like an interview. So what you do, does it kind of, uh, it's more of like, like an assessment of how much money you make and where your, your social status. Yeah. And it, 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 it adds it up. It way. adds up to that yeah. point. Um, if you a- if you just initially said, "Oh, where you from? That's fine. What do you do?" It's it, it starts to become a bit too nosy. We're not getting to that level yet. We're not at that stage. If if we joked around beforehand, it feels fine. It yeah. would slide under the radar. Yeah, but, it would. But yeah. if it came, you know, it, that that's that's it, yeah. I guess it's kind of like a man coming up to you and and asking for your number straight away. It's it's just, you know, it's it's weird. Yeah. It's it's too quick. Yep. Um. Yeah. Hope that made sense. What you doing, little man? What are you doing? I you, said. Do you say, you want to be? You want to give some answers? You want to say hi? Hi. I away. Say hi, ladies. Hi, ladies. <laughs> <laughs> okay. Do you want to go upstairs? For Tasha and doing up here. Oh. Oh, he's okay. Okay. Do you want to go? Yeah, I'll go. Do you want to take him as well? Sorry, excuse me. I'll just go and deal with motherly things. <laughs> um, 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 Samira, how can you test whether a man is genuine and trustworthy man confident in his masculinity without being too vulnerable? Uh, for example, diversion personal information about yourself that he can hold up against you and blackmail you with. Um, I have had an issue with this recently. I thought being vulnerable and honest from the start is okay. <clears throat> so we talk a lot about vulnerability, but we never say, we never tell you, we never advise that you just the first time you meet someone, you just go there and, and tell them everything about your uh, every detail about your life and all the suffering that you've had. No, you know, that's you're not there yet. You're not there yet. So there are levels to vulnerability, and you start at one, and then you go to two, and you go to three, and you go to four, etc. Um, and you only go there if that vulnerability is reciprocated and also um, appreciated. So, um, again, the, there's no need to, like, for example, if you meet someone, um, the first time you meet someone, you don't have to talk about how um, uh, you got bullied in the eighth grade and you know, you were cutting yourself and, and that led to an eating disorder. You don't have to do that. You can, a simple vulnerability could be that, um, you know, some, something that's a lot less intense. Um, they have to earn the higher levels of vulnerability, if that makes sense. Um, and, and if you can do that, if you can, if you can just slowly deepen that vulnerability, then it's, <laughs> Um, I don't think you, you would have to worry about anyone holding anything against you or blackmailing you with that. Um, yeah, just so, so be calibrated. How to be more intimate with my man and how do I learn to appreciate him? Naomi. Na- Naomi. 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 Well, Naomi, let me. Naomi. Let me ask you a question. What do you appreciate about him? Um, find the things to appreciate. Um, Tony Robbins has this great line that we we regularly use ourselves in in our life, and that is that um, turn your expectations into appreciation. And uh, very often, when we get in a relationship, we start to expect things, and because that's that's you, just you get a human, yeah, it's a human thing and to do. So um, write down yeah. every day one thing that you appreciate about this person. Yeah. Yeah. Um, it, it has to be practiced. If it's not practiced, then it doesn't happen. Like we naturally want to take things for granted. Um, we naturally get comfortable um, in certain things that we feel like is certain. Uh, and and it takes it, it's it's just like businesses do the same thing. They they become complacent, and you know, look at Sony. They're on top of the world with their Walkman or their Discman until the MP3 player came out. And they're like, whoa. I mean, Sony would be in better position to, to start something, to, to create an MP3 player because they had all the market 
uh, share in the world. They had all the money, yet we know the iPod. We don't know the, the Sony, whatever it is yeah. that they made. Um, it's easy to get complacent. So it's, it's, a, it's a habit that you have to get into to start appreciating things, whatever that means for you, whether that is to um, put yourself in a situation where um, – you have a, a sense of scarcity rather than abundance. You know, we talk about abundance a lot. Mm. Um, and I think there is an appeal to abundance. But, but there's a great saying, there's a great quote from Simon Sinek, actually. Abundance, or I'm, I'm sort of putting my own spin on it, abundance is actually one of the fastest ways to short, short circuit your neurology. So, you know, imagine if you grew up in abundance, how lazy would you be, right? Yeah, yeah. Um, <clears throat> that's usually what happens to, to those kids who, who grew up with everything sort of spoon-fed to them. So it's not abundance that you want. It's it's a sense of, it's a balance between abundance and scarcity and knowing when to go to each. Mm. That That's where um, you truly become calibrated is to, uh, you, you become strong, you become resilient, you become really appreciative of every little thing. Um you know, as a part of that, I always had this plan of um, taking my kids, uh, because they're boys, they can take it, taking my kids when they're maybe 10 or 12 years old and go homeless for a while, just so that they can see exactly, you know, see certain parts of the world that they otherwise wouldn't see um, and give them the skills of how to survive in that environment. Um, anyhow, yeah, going off topic a bit. Yeah. Um, guys, you're welcome to ask questions live if you have any. Everyone's a bit shy today, and that's okay. That is all right. On YouTube, we have some Princess T, best way to grab a man's attention without doing anything. Well, without doing anything like what sitting on your couch. Um, I what guess kind of attention, like, isn't just get him to notice you in any way, and do you feel like you blend in, or you're gonna have to clarify that one? Um, but again, this is. One reason why we, uh, why, why I created the whole Attraction Pebble series, Attraction Pebbles, it's like a little pebble that you throw at a man and that doesn't make you look low value or desperate, it doesn't make you look like you're chasing the man. And it, it, it starts off this, this, this conversation, starts off this dialogue um, where you look, you get to look high value, you get to look playful, and you know, it gives, gives you that opportunity to start a conversation. Yeah, that's, um, right. that's the whole reason why we, um, why I put together these. Attraction pebbles. pebbles, yeah. Go check it out. I think it's yes, like it throwing is. a pebble. It is forty percent off right now. If you just if you go check it out, um, if you're on our email list, the the link is there. If you want the link, I'll add it below at some point. Um, Clara, welcome. Uh, tip on deepening and strengthening the connection with a man in a committed relationship over time in, in the long <laughs> run. Um, I think I feel like we've sort of covered that a lot. Yeah. Um, yeah, I feel like we've covered that a lot. We have. If you have, uh, you know, more specific questions, let us know. Um, Jill, how do I, how do I keep from giving up? Um, you know, I think at some point you have to start appreciating yourself a bit more. Um, yeah. I think it's easy to live in our bodies and not really appreciate where we've come from and where we are today. Um, and even if you feel like you've made all these mistakes along the way and you feel shameful or embarrassed or guilty about these mistakes, those mistakes often have a silver lining or those mistakes often had a, a better intent. Like, for example, um, you know, you raise the kids and then you forget your, your business or, or something, you know, so you can't blame yourself for forgetting the business because the, the bigger intent there is to, uh, to appreciate what you've done for the kids. There's, there's always something well, you good not to have kids and, and or, build your business. Exactly. Um, you know, there are business owners out there who chose consciously not to have kids so that they can pursue their business. So you got, you have to appreciate those, um, those decisions which have made you who you are. And I think, I think start from there. Mm. I think always start from there. Like what positives have come from all my actions in the last five years, 10 years, whatever. Yeah. Um, and, and if you can really stay with that, I, um, I'm sure every single one of us can find so many positives from the journey that we've been on. Yeah. Even the things that are just 
um, at first glance seem to be the worst things? Uh, okay, good question. Laura, when do men know she's the one? Um, we sort of covered that a little bit, but I feel like um, oh, oh, oh. Um, she says, I hear a lot of guys telling me they know it directly or are still searching. Yeah, that's exactly what I mentioned just before. Um, it's a feeling. It's a feeling. It's not something that they can necessarily articulate. And even if they did articulate it, they, they, they go, oh, is that, is that really true? Uh, but, but it's a feeling. That's um, right. It's a, it's a gut level like, oh. This feels right. When you show, yeah, when you show up as the one and only, uh, that's when men are more likely to have this gut level feeling about you. It's not. Things it's not instant. It's it's something that builds. Uh, it can build very quickly. Of course, yes. Um, think, and, and the way you would know as a woman would be to uh, number one test. Okay, so we, we have a bunch of um, tests. Uh, to differentiate between indicators of interest versus indicators of commitment. And if a man naturally commit, like sends you a lot of indicators of a commitment, then you know you're on the right path. Because it's very easy for men to show you interest, but that interest, <laughs> interest is cheap. Um, any man could give you interest, could, could show you interest. But that those signs of commitment, and, and one of them is that he would he would want to spend time with you, even if sex was taken out of the picture. Yep. Um, so they're not just, so you, you weed them out as in you, you, you filter that out when you take sex out of the, out of the equation. Yeah. And I think that there's so many women out there who, you know, I've written the feminine woman website now for more than 10 years. And in my time, I've seen so many women completely disbelieve it. When I say that when a man is in love with you, he doesn't need to have sex with you. It's enough to just be with you. Um, they just don't believe it. But the women who have had it know the truth, and that is that, yes, it's true that a man who is in love with you is quite happy to just be with you. He doesn't have to have sex with you, and he doesn't have to push for sex with you. Um, yeah. Um, I was going to say something. Uh, but Yeah, so for a lot of men, it's easy to um, go through life and – Tell people that they're not, uh, they don't want a relationship. And I was the same, actually. I, I was exactly the same when I met Renee. I made up my mind that I didn't want a relationship. Um, I want to focus on myself first. Your golf. You know, I, you know, I wanted to be a professional um, athlete and I, I wanted to focus on myself. And, but, but it happens, it, it happens kind of to you rather than something that you decide. So even if a man says, I'm not ready for a relationship, it means nothing because, no, because it's, it's, yeah. it's, it's the emotions that, that, that matter. And, and um, when they say that they're still looking or they're, they're not ready for anything, it just means that they, they're not feeling that right now, I guess. Yeah. Yeah. Completely agree. Yeah. Um, hope that makes sense. Uh, Denis asks ways that a, a feminine women can show value by doing something masculine in a relationship. Well, that's funny because Renee is missing her jujitsu class right now to do this live Q and a. Um, and it's rather a masculine sport. It's a, it's a very masculine thing. I mean, you, you're, you're out there breaking people's arms and choking people out. So um, I think. Or, or getting choked out or getting my arm broken. Yeah. yeah. <laughs> so I think. It sounds very feminine. Doesn't it. it to me as a man, it feels good that she knows how to defend herself. Um, it, you can say that that's a, a masculine part of her. Yeah. Um, that you appreciate. That, 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 that I could appreciate. to you. Yeah, that's a, because I can feel safer. I feel safer when if I was to go out. Go anywhere. Her, yeah, um, exactly. That she can look after herself. And I feel safer. And it's, by the way, as a kind of um, side note to your question, Sometimes by being masculine within yourself, it adds more value to your feminine because it balances you out and it gives more uh, space. Is, is, space. And it's the masculine is a container for your feminine to truly exist because it feels safe. Yeah, exactly. Yeah, so exactly, um, you're not so afraid of being more vulnerable because you know you can look after yourself. Um, okay, what is this? Oh, we'll, we'll go back to the. YouTube's Princess T. I think 
Princess T, um, best way to grab a man's attention without doing anything in a public setting. I think we sort of mentioned that. Um, you know, you throw little pebbles. You, you, you uh, for, 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 for the large majority, like women, all they have to do for the most part is to glance at a man, make eye contact just a fraction longer than what's normal. And a lot of those, uh, like for, for smart men, for men who are attuned, they will pick up on that and they will want to approach. It may take a, a couple we have of times. To do it a few more times. Yeah. yeah. Um, Depending on how thick. It's is. it's called subtle signaling. Yeah. That's what women do naturally. Um, but if, if you had to do something else on top of that, what you could do is you know you, you can just go up to a man and say, "Hey, where'd you get your shoes from?" Um, something uh, something so innocent. Um, yeah, that, that just breaks the ice. It's yeah. it's a lot better than just, hey, what's your name? Hey, you know, hi. Yeah. <laughs> hi. <laughs> exactly. Um, and it's true. I mean, as a woman, I do admire men's shoes sometimes. Like, yeah, you, nice shoes. <laughs> it's you know, you could be asking, you could be asking something. You could be asking to buy your father a pair of shoes for his birthday, yeah. and you wanted to where'd you um, get those from? Nice. Get some recommendations. Yeah. Um, or you can say, hey, you know. Nice shoes, uh, you know. It, it's it's a nice outfit, you know. Just as a as a as a um, as a sort of a half serious kind of um, a comment as you walk past someone, you know. Yeah. Just just because you're impressed by the outfit. Yeah. Because mm -hmm. most men can't dress themselves. Yep. Whatever. Um. um, 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 um. Please add subtitles for the hearing impaired. Oh, that I'm not sure if Facebook. No, I think not Facebook live. I, I think Facebook may have a way to do that afterwards. Yeah, live, yeah, yeah. Perhaps. Um, um, yeah. So Karen asks, "What is this hot and cold thing men do?" I understand they need space, but the man I'm dating takes two weeks to get back to me. Okay, so first of all, how does that feel? And sit with that feeling for a while. What does that mean intuitively? Don't overthink it. What does that mean? What does that feel like? Yeah. And, and, and I think makes you feel. And, and your feelings will guide you to the right answer or the right meaning. Yeah. Um, it's easy to overthink things, but again, two weeks, how does that feel? Usually we overthink things as a way to kind of avoid the process of feeling. He can, okay, he can say... I love you, and then still be gone for two two weeks. Your feelings will always know the truth or, or find the deeper truth. Yeah. Not don't, don't always trust the words. Oh. Stick with your feelings. Yep. Uh, let's move to Maddie. How to develop our dark feminine, being truly uninhibited and letting go of being nice. Well, I think I mean the the easiest way to do that would be to just um, put on your most obnoxious outfit and go out in public and wave your middle finger around. <laughs> Very soon, you stop caring about what other people think. Yes, it may offend a few people, but think of the benefits. <laughs> <laughs> you, you do that and you, you come back and you go, oh, why did I just do that? Oh, that must be my dark side. Okay, so I have a dark side, so I can connect with something. Yeah. So you have that anchor Mm -hmm. To go to, mm. to 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 hold on to, um, so by by swinging the pendulum so far, it forces <laughs> your mind to it forces you to really accept that part of yourself and and make justifications in your brain to to go okay, well, uh, that must be me. That must be a part of me because I did it. I mean, I yeah. can't I can't undo it. Everyone saw me, so I guess that is a part of me. What if someone tries to hurt you? Could you flip okay. the bird? Do or, Do jujitsu. <laughs> no, I'm joking. Well, just practice the first where where there's no one else. You know, go to an empty um, playground or go, go to an empty space and, and just practice it, and, and just see how that feels. Let let that feeling sit in your body. That that's that's the quickest way to go about it. Whether you're going to do that or not, I'm not sure. Yeah. But you know, if, if it was, if Renee had the same question. For me, I would make her do it. 
I would make her do it because I know that that's what she needs. That's how you snap into it, you know, instantaneously. It's a pattern break. Exactly. You're asking about how to not be so nice. So, well, this will break your pattern. If yeah. You're fast. And if I was there right now, and if you're my, um, if I had to coach you, if you were my client, and we're there face to face, that's exactly what we would do. And boom, just like that. Okay. Okay. Um, Marie, high value relationships with other women. There is a lot out there focusing on love and romance with men, but not a lot of emotional support and connection with women. Relationships with other women can enhance our femininity. Absolutely, they can. And come from a more fully embodied, emotionally full place, even in. Yes, absolutely. I think um, it's a difficult thing because I think what naturally is supposed to happen is is we're supposed to have these women in our families to do that with, to, to balance that energy from and off. Um, in this day and age, families are sort of more broken up and, uh, um, you know, almost all of us come from fractured families or dysfunctional families. So that's not always an option. So I think it, it's, it's very, very difficult to trust other women as a woman. Um, as a man, I don't have the same issue, but, but I know, um, as as women, it's hard to connect with other women yeah, be. deeply because women can be very mean, yeah, and th th they're not often very nice. Um, I think support groups or certain groups, uh, certain hobby groups, are, are very useful in that sense. Um, what do you think? High re high value relationships with other women. The only way I've learned to deal with it with women, which is something I've adapted in the last five years is to take full responsibility in my interactions with them. Um, having worked with so many women over the last 10 years, I've come to see and notice and pick up pretty quickly if they feel insecure, fearful, and if they feel like they're not good enough to either interact or um, find, you know, be friends with me. Um, whatever it is, I, I try to see where they're at and uh, if I can add value to their life, I'll do it. So if I see that they have an insecurity, I'll specifically try to build them up. Um, with women, it's very important to, to make them feel like you're on their side uh, because I think intuitively women know on some level that we're in competition with each other, or at least women are very sensitive to where the resources are going. Um, and if we have less than another woman, sometimes it's easy for for women to feel like, well, you know, I can't be friends with her because I'll constantly be exposed to all the bad feelings, you know, about what I have or don't have in my life. So become more resourceful yourself. That's the only real way to have high value, high value uh, female friendships and um, just have the right intent for them, truly want the best for them and just, just be the bigger person. That's the only way, I think, to really have women trust you. But I won't deny that, you know, Many years ago, I, I had trouble, you know, staying friends with women. It, it was difficult. Um, part of that was also the school environment I was in. But, yeah, just, yeah, I, th I think I answered the question the best way I know how. So I hope that helps. Okay. Eno Abassi, how do you handle a man that seems too good to be true? Two words, attraction, connection. That's it. Um, focus on that. Joanna, this is a good question. Okay. Do you have any absolute deal breaker rules in your marriage? For example, things that you're not allowed to say, like calling names or threatening with divorce or infidelity. I was married for 24 years and I don't think we would have lasted without setting those ground rules in the early years. What do you think? Um, you know, it's great that, you know, uh, I was married or oh, you were married. It's great that you know the marriage lasted twenty four years, but I'm not you know. But that that's not the goal here. It's the quality, not the length of the marriage. We know people who've been married fifty years and they hate each other. They're miserable, um, and that's not a place that you want to be in. That's not that's not a no. It's not a. It doesn't like it's toxic, and it sucks value from you know names all the time. <laughs> we talk about divorce all the time as well. Yeah. And he jokes about divorce in me. He calls me an SLUT sometimes. <laughs> it's just funny. It, it is. Well, here's the thing, right? Let, let me explain that one. Okay. Let me explain that one. So um, 
So the, the reason why I use the word SL, uh, SU, SLUT, um, from a very young age, Renee's mother always shamed her um, for so many things. And, and she would slut shame her without any reason, just for putting on clothes or just whatever it is. She was, she was this twisted woman. Yeah. So when I was together with Renee, it was always a very sensitive topic. Um, and I couldn't, I couldn't let go because for many years I had become this somewhat sexually withheld, um, not approved, not approved by any means, but I would withhold fully being myself. And so it was like this deep emotional wound that's anchored within that one word. So, you know, with any wounds, it's, it, it's heartbreaking for me to, to even, you know, to, to, to see that, to see the wound, to see that there and not being able to do anything about it. So I took it upon myself. Okay. You know, this is what we're going to do. I'm going to call you that name in the most playful way I know how until you become, until that, that wound is um, no more. It's like massaging a scar until that scar tissue goes away so that she becomes a lot more desensitized to, to that word and no longer feels ashamed uh, and shame associated with the word slut. And so I would do it in all sorts of funny ways, in all sorts of funny contexts, in completely random context. And now, it and, and, and now she smiles. Yeah. Now it's a, it's a, it's, it's a funny thing. It's a, it's mm. a, it's an ongoing joke that we have. But I've called you an SLUT as well. Yeah, exactly. You know, it, so it goes both no, ways. It goes both ways. So I, th I think we all know that in order to have um, truly securely attached even a friendship, but securely attached intimate relationship, you should be able to joke about the most morbid, emotionally sensitive things. You should be able to approach it in a playful way and get that energy out. Um, there's nothing worse than just trying to avoid you, Yeah, you have to talk about things. it. You have to talk about yeah. it. And the best way to do it is do it in a playful way. Yeah. If you hold it all in, if it's unspoken, that's the most... That's why that, people just... That's why people hide. They, they go to underground... Um, I don't know, people have, I'm not the best, best person to describe this, you are, but we have they, they, they twisted have, ways yeah, kinks to meet these kinks that that, that they, came about as a way, as a result of suppression. Yeah, exactly. Um, hurting women, so, so men or women hurting women because they were never, they never felt comfortable in their own skin, you know. Things like that. So, so there's nothing that we, we can't say to each other. And, yeah. and and I like to keep it that way. I think that's the rule. So the ground rule in itself is that we're okay with insulting each other insulting each other. Yeah. In the ways that were completely socially unacceptable to most yeah. people. And that's also allows for our dark side. It, exactly. It gets the question. energy out as well. Yeah, the dark side. Um, yeah. you know, if I was to um, you know, if I was to go away, let's say, you know, take my, one of my kids to overseas for a few days or a week or whatnot, you know, I joke with her. I'd say, you know, um, I'll keep an eye on the plumber, et cetera. You know, it, it's a joke, but yeah. it, it gets the tension out. Um, it's, it's, it doesn't leave things unsaid. You're not going to like each other at times. I'm not sure what that means. I don't know what she means. Okay. Um, she's going to have to clarify that. But, okay. yeah, it, it gets it out. And it's not, yeah, everything – I believe everything should be, you should be able to talk about anything and everything. Yeah. Um, and, you know, we're here to yeah, add value like to I each other. A lot of people, a, a woman commented in the group a long time ago, um, she said something to a man, make a joke about something. Um, I wish I could remember exactly what it was. Like, made a joke about him being silly or something. I don't know. And she's like, oh, and I thought I sensed that it bothered him. So I asked him if it bothered him. And he said it did. So I know to avoid that. And my response was, well, avoidance isn't the solution. Avoidance just keeps that discomfort that he has with it unexplored and unhealed. Yeah. Um, I'm not saying you should deliberately go and say, oh, my God, you're so, you know, like that. Yeah. It's, so it's like if you, let's say, cut your arm and there's a massive scar and, uh you know, let's say your arm was in a cast for six weeks or whatever. Um, 
what they will tell you, the physiotherapists will tell you to massage that scar once mm. the cast comes off. Mm. Why do they tell you to do that? Well, because it 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 uh, it stretches the scar tissue and it makes it less painful and and helps the the sensitization of that scar. Yeah. And, and it, it's a process. Now, what you can do is you can not touch the scar and it's always going to be there and it's always going to be sensitive, perhaps, right? Yeah. And you go, oh, I should avoid that scar. I should avoid using that arm completely anyway. You know, you can do that, but that's not really value to the arm. It's not value to yourself. Yeah. <laughs> or you can go, okay, it's going to hurt a little bit. I know it's going to hurt. Let's do it in the best way possible. Let's massage it. Let's use some um, oils, use some something that, that soothes the skin. And let's do it in a, in a way that's maybe playful or in a way that adds value to the arm. And let's continue to do it until that scar disappears or yeah. until that it, it no longer hurts until it, it, it you are desensitized to, to, to the feelings of it to the pain so that I, I believe is adding value rather than avoiding that kind of pain or avoiding that kind of conflict you're not going to like each other when you get angry at each other Terry, uh, uh, we can use we can use this oh okay to look at the comments there you go. Anne, another question. Renee, in your feminine energy, after particularly volatile arguments in a relational climate where your man is looking to see your trust in him, would you reach out often to reconcile when you know your man is simultaneously going through a hard time? Or would you wait for him, let him take the lead to reach out? Thanks for this great content. You're most welcome, Terry. Okay, so let me just read that again. Would you want to know if you should reach out after particularly volatile argument to reconcile? Um, I would review the argument and kind of get to the heart of what it was really about. And I would, in my own time, try to see his perspective, really try and feel into his perspective. Um, and then if there was anything I need to apologise for, apologise for it, take responsibility for it. Um, and the most important thing you can do is just take responsibility for how he feels. Um you know, it may never have been your intent to hurt him or to cause an argument, but there's nothing stopping you from taking responsibility for how he feels now and for caring how he might feel. For example, was there trust breached? Um, does he have any reason to doubt your loyalty to him? All these things are things that you may want to consider, think about. Are those possible things that, you know, have now been damaged? And do I need to try and make an attempt to repair them? Um, and also, other than that, just feel into how you feel as well. Just process it within yourself. What what got you into the argument? Like, is, it, is there something you need to explore? Um, yeah, it's hard to know without knowing. It's hard to answer without knowing the actual nature of this volatile argument you're referring to. Uh, just but as a generic answer, that... That's the best answer I have. Give answer, just, yeah, be there. Like mm. whoever gets a chance, just yeah. be there for the other person. Um, yeah, yeah, exactly. Know that it's not about you. Um, it's almost never about you. And if you can just be there, you don't have to say sorry if you're not in that emotional state yet, but you just, just be there and and try to feel what they feel and and give space for their feelings as well. Yeah. Yeah. Um, yeah. Hope that makes sense. <laughs> um, here's a good question. Virginia, chronic illnesses, illness often means some sort of dependency, financially, physically, emotionally. We are super vulnerable because of our... Uh, independence is being ripped away from us. We have limited opportunities in the workforce, etc. Absolutely, I completely agree. How do women like us show up as high value when we are actually very vulnerable? Um, it's high value is not about being financially, physically, or even emotionally dependent. Not at all. Um, I think part of being high value. Um, in a dating sense, is just to accept and, and and appreciate yourself and know that, hey, even if I can't 
get from here to there or physically, or even if I um, need support financially, doesn't mean that I'm a bad person. You know, I, I still have love to offer. You know, as I mentioned before, the you know raising kids, a part of raising kids, it's not money doesn't raise kids. It's love, attention, and care. That those are the the ultimate resources. And in a relationship, yes, money matters, but it's not the the ultimate thing. It's um, not the ultimate value. You know, Renee and I, we've been homeless in the past, and it's been incredibly difficult. We didn't have a big house, you know, with you know pelicans in the backyard. We didn't have <laughs> a lot of things, um, and we made sure that that was more important to us, the relationship that is, than you know, all these other things that everyone else would have cared about, yeah. you know. Yeah. So we made sure that we were a team. Yeah. And, I mean, that's something I had to learn too. I was never perfect. So I had to learn to be a part of the team first and foremost. The team as in, like, always valuing connection, putting us first before all the other concerns. Yeah. So I think you can absolutely still show up as a high-value yeah, woman. Yeah, of course. Um, it's it's about what you can give. It's it's the the emotions that you're able to access and 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 offer and, and connect man. with. Yeah. Yeah. Ultimately, that's 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 everything. Yeah. Mm. Um, Terry Ann replied with, "Thank you. It's difficult as he's shutting me out right now. Showing up is, is uh, send a sweet test. Past situation where you breached my trust is worth." Is worth. He wants to know that the trust issue is done. Oh. At the end of the day, I think it's just important to, to be there. Um, so sorry, just, he, 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 he uh, breached her trust? Yes. Yeah. <clears throat> and it's important to have these deep talks. I mean... I, Ultimately, one of the highest value things a man can have from you is your full trust. Yeah. You know? Am I right or am I wrong? Yeah. Yeah. Obviously, it's not going to be that easy to just regain some of the trust. Of course not. But, but it is important to start a dialogue and, and, and start it from there. Indicate your willingness to try to trust. I think that's the key here. Yeah. It's uh, the willingness to try. I think it's when you're closed off, you're like, no, I don't trust you, that, that that creates more difficulties for both of you. But if you're willing to say, hey, okay, this is scary as hell, I still have a bit of hurt from what happened, but I'm willing to be here and try to trust. That would be a gift to him. Um, and it would kind of, at the same time, acknowledge where you're at so that you don't have to be like, yeah, well, I fully trust you now when you don't. Yeah. <clears throat> um, a few more questions. We've been going for almost two hours. Yeah. Wow. Um, I'm impressed that. I'm still talking. I know, my bum's going a bit like numb. flat and numb. <laughs> um, good question, Deborah. Deborah is a regular commenter, uh, poster in our Facebook group. By the way, guys, if you haven't joined our Facebook group, um, go ahead and do so because there's always a lot of discussion there. It is facebook.com slash groups slash high value feminine women. Um, yeah. Come and join us. Yeah, just search for high value feminine women on Facebook, at, and you'll find attract it. and connect with high value men. That's yeah. uh, so. Deborah uh, asked. I spent the last three years working on me, listening to your teaching, really doing a lot of soul searching after a bad marriage of thirty years. I feel like I'm ready, but I just haven't met anyone that has the quality has quality and character. How do you stay motivated after so many years of waiting? Number one, I, I would I would say focus on offering. Be be generous with your love. Um, with everything and everyone. Um, the more love that you offer to the world, the more it's going to come back to you. And the more you, other people will be at it. Like, the more, the more they will feel be it. Yeah. So, so it's like you're vibrate, vibrating at a higher frequency. It's like you, your aura, your sense of radiance um, uh, expands and reaches more people. Yeah. Um, I would start with that and focus on that first rather than waiting for someone to show up, which is kind of a value extracting kind of paradigm if you yeah. really think about it. It's like, you know, I'm waiting to take. Yeah, that's right. Yeah, even the wording itself, um, not picking on you, Deborah, but, um, you know, I feel like I'm ready, but I just haven't met anybody that has quality and character. Um, 
yeah, it is a, a value extracting kind of approach. And I understand that because, you know, being out there um, dating can be disappointing and overwhelming yeah. at times. And it can kind of give you this semi jaded or fully jaded uh, approach to men and relationships. So um, it's easy to get there. It's easy to get to that place where you just feel down. But when you get there, you're also much more likely to have a value extracting aura and a value extracting approach. So I would also, to add on to what you were saying, take care of your innocence. You know, um, take care of yourself. Um, don't get involved in situations that might uh, further that kind of yeah. that feeling. And yeah, protect that. Protect that sense of innocence and protect that sense of that, protect, that mindset. Protect the part of yourself that that wants to truly give out love. And give it selflessly and uh maybe you can also explore some of the past sadness anger and hurt that you may have had from men who may have hurt you explore that feel through that a bit so that that can free you up for new things new and better things yeah absolutely um yeah add value be be such a, a source of love that and, and and playfulness and and vibrancy that that people gravitate towards you. Yeah, and even you know, if you want some examples, I know she's quite old now, but Goldie Horn is such a great surface example, obviously, because I don't know Goldie Horn personally. But watch movies with her in it, with Goldie Horn in it. <laughs> watch movies with <clears throat> women in it who are already like that, so that you can feel and resonate with their uh, personality and how they show up. Um, yeah, what do you think? Yeah. Um, the more you're around it, the more you can become like it. So movies are a good source of that. Movies with the, the right characters. Um, I think you like, what's her name? Um, the character you said. I'm not a guy, but I like the example from you. I just can't remember it because it obviously didn't. Some movies, there's a girl... A woman who's a really great actress who's always in those kinds Taylor, of roles. The only Taylor, Taylor only, but there was another one. She's mm -hmm. blonde. Anna, Anna, someone. Blonde. Anna, Anna, in a movie from a long time ago. Meg Ryan, no. No, <laughs> Meg Ryan is another good example, but Anna who? No, Anna. there's an Anna. There's a Anna. Do I know any Annas? <sighs> <sighs> I swear there was an animal. It'll, come, it'll come to me. It'll come to me. Okay. Um, yeah. I, Anna Ferris. Was that the one? Do I know her in any movies? You she does a lot more comedy than. Oh, okay. Drew Barrymore is another good example. Okay. Yeah, 50 First Dates, those kind of uh, upbeat roles. Okay. Um, so I hope we answered that question, Deborah. Um, it's. It's about adding value. It's about, you know, like, as I say, um, it will happen when you least expect it as well. Yeah. Um, so. Yeah, because you're not focusing. You're not focusing on what you're getting. Place. You're yeah. not focusing on what you're getting. Yeah. And, and things can um, work out a lot better when you're, you're not just looking to, to, to uh, take. Yeah. Rose, what about, uh, what about when it, uh, it is the man with the low, lower sex drive. What can you do about that? Um, okay, well, de-stress. Stress is the number one thing that kills sex drive, like the increase of cortisol in the blood, yep. whatnot. Um, you can, you can, and and then with that kind of de-stress, you're able to um, like lift weights, eat eat more red meat. All those things will help. But I think the biggest thing is to de-stress and, and work out what is actually um, lowering the sex drive right now. I'd say it's most likely stress, especially in this day and age. Yeah, of course. Um, uh, let's have a look. We have a few here. Uh, is there going to be a replay? There will be a replay. I'm pretty sure it will just be automatically um, uploaded. So don't worry about that. Um, it's almost been two hours. Yeah, I think we should. Uh, we can look at this last one. Okay. Jemmarie, she's a long-time follower. Yep. 
After four years together, we broke up. It's been a year and four months now that we have been broken up. Why all of a sudden, within the last two or three months, he is trying to be all nice? The other day, he even said he should have married me. Now he's also being all open about things. Why do men sometimes withdraw in a relationship and then when they break up with women, the woman, um, they come back acting so different and so open? <laughs> Well, well, first of all, where's he at in his life right now? Is he single? Because <laughs> that couldn't say a lot. That could set the whole tone for my answer. Um, sounds like he is. And how long has he been single for? Um, it's, I mean. When you don't have anyone, it's easy to feel exactly, back and then just go to what you think you might feel be lonely. Easy. Yeah. You feel lonely and, and, and you want some of the, the, the same warmth that you had at some point in that four-year relationship. Yeah, but I, I wouldn't run with it. No, no, I wouldn't yeah. either. Um, I mean, you broke up for a reason. Yeah. Um, but, you know, you can see where he's at and, and, and see, you know. At the end of the day, is he still the same person? If he's still the same person, he's still going to fall into the same uh, habits and patterns and it's going to happen again another four years yeah, of Most that. people don't change. For people to change, it has to be a radical shift in their whole environment. Yeah. A radical shift in the people they spend their time with. Um. So, so, so you, you yeah. figure that out. You go, you know, see where he's at emotionally. Yeah. And if he's still at the same place, then you know that the same thing is going to happen again and again. Yeah. Um, but why do people do that? Well, for one, um, you broke up because he, you know, it, it could be for all sorts of reasons, but uh, he may feel like, you know, let, let's do something else. Let's let's try something else. And if that doesn't work out, he may feel, oh, you know, I'm alone again. Let's go back to what we're familiar with. A lot of women do it. I'm sorry. Yeah. A lot of men. men do it. Yeah. Yeah. And women do it to some extent as well. Yeah. It's just it, to to be in a relationship. It's a risky thing to do. It's it's a you know, think about opportunity cost. Think about all the other people, all the other people in relationships that you can't be in. Right, so that opportunity cost in itself. So then, we as men and women, we subconsciously weigh it out. Okay, is the opportunity cost bigger than what I'm feeling right now? The emotions that I'm feeling, um, and the quality of that relationship, and and you weigh it up. And sometimes, if the relationship isn't that amazing, it's a bit lack lackluster, it's a bit mediocre, then. Sometimes people go take the risk. All right, let's break up and look for greener grass. Yeah. Doesn't always work out that way. Um, and then they sort of go, okay, well, that risk didn't pay off. What do I do now? Yeah. So, um, but your job, Jen, is to look at the man and, and, and see if it's, he's still the same guy. If he's still the same guy, it's probably going to happen again. Um, and and also for your for your sake, learn about what happened in that relationship for not to turn out uh, to, for it to turn out that way. Yeah. Was there not enough attraction connection? What can you do to remedy that in the future? What you know, it's it's about learning. And if you don't learn, if you don't just really understand the lessons that that previous relationship had to teach you, then you can't move on into the future, and you know you can't uh, not expect the same problems to, to occur again and again yeah and also just to get the maximum value out of a relationship that didn't work out you would want to reflect and see what happened and, and make sure that you are learning everything you possibly could have learned um moving forward all right i am my voice talking for two hours mm. um there is um uh, just a quick quick couple of uh, announcements. Um, number one announcement is that, yes, again, we are running a sale, a Valentine's Day sale on some of the most popular programs. Uh, we are offering 40% off with the coupon code VDAY2020. Um, if you want the link, we'll put that up um, in the comment section afterwards. Uh, go check it out. Um, you know, again, we pride ourselves on digging deep into finding the deepest levels of truth in all of our programs and teachings and articles. And I feel like that is something that is so unique. I think uh, not a lot of people do that in this marketplace. 
Um, and we've had the privilege of being together and teaching it together for so many years. And it is, it's, it's such a wonderful gift, not, for, not just for everyone, um, all our followers and readers, but for ourselves as well. I think that's, you know, that's, I'm so grateful. We've spent the last 10 years together working out the answers to women's problems because we cared so much. And uh, sorry, guys, don't mean to disappear from the video. Uh, yeah, so we've spent many, many years, more than a decade now, figuring out the answers. And uh, the answers that we give are unique to our journey, to what we've seen. And we're always adjusting to, other, to, our, to everyone's feedback as well. So, yeah, you won't ever get those um, typical... The it's typical surface, uh, surface, surface advice. advice, yeah. It, um, yeah. There's a lot of danger in following the, those um, those rules or that kind of advice. Um, it's usually piggybacked off one person who started it. Yeah. And then everyone else piggybacks off it and then it becomes this thing that doesn't make that much sense. Yeah, and you're going to um, end up in that cycle again and again and again and again and again. Um, real, real, real advice has a, a unique tone to it like authentic advice has a your gut you, would know. you know that it comes from who they are and their own journey and your gut would know what's authentic yeah, would, yeah okay then the last announcement i had to make was that there is a good possibility that we might do a live event this year live event so i'm very excited um i feel like this is way overdue i feel like we should have done that ages uh, years and years ago but we had kids they're a little bit older now maybe it's possible this year um I really look forward maybe to. Maybe they can hand out tickets at the door. Maybe they could be like, yeah, the, oh, the no. tickets take, people. Take the tickets at the yeah. door. Yeah, <laughs> exactly. Maybe they can help out. Um, I'm really, really excited to um, host to run a live event this year. I would love to do that um, uh, and, and connect with you guys live in person. I think we can make a much bigger impact live. Um, yeah, if you're interested in that kind of thing then let us know, comment below. Um, and, uh, you know, I think, we'd love to hear from you. Yeah, absolutely. So that's all from us. I hope you've enjoyed this live Q and session. Two hours of talking from us. Um, I am starving. I haven't had breakfast and it's already 1, 1 PM. Yeah. So I'm going to go get something to eat. Um, I hope you've enjoyed us. Uh, and thank you for joining us in this live Q and a, thank you guys. Once again, Go check out the sale, uh, 40% off. Um, but regardless, uh, we wish you all the very best. Sending you love wherever you are. And, yeah, again in the future. Yeah. All right, guys, let's conclude this. I am so hungry. Mm. <laughs> Take care. Bye-bye. <laughs> and we'll talk to you very, very soon. You can press the finish over there. Okay. Bye, guys. Bye-bye.